My name is Maggie McAlpine, and I'm the Cyber Engagement Lead for the Center for Threat Informed Defense here at MITRE Ingenuity. And with me today is Carl Wright, the Chief Commercial Officer of Attack IQ. Carl? Hey, Maggie. Happy to be here. So, this is a really interesting project we're going to be looking at today. This is the CVE to Attack Mappings. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about yourself, your uh, Attack IQ, and how you got involved in this particular project. Yeah, no, thank you. Very happy to do that. So as you're aware, Attack IQ has been a founding research uh, partner of the center since the center's inception, and we've been incredibly um, excited to participate on well over 18 projects now since uh, since the beginning. Um, th this particular project was one of the early ones, and um, it, it was complex on more levels than you know, I, we probably have time to talk about today. But I was particularly excited about this project because for a long time, we've talked about the convergence of risk management and threat management. Um, you know, we spent a lot of money on both sides of the fence, um, you know, and the reality is they don't always uh, uh, achieve mutual outcomes, right? And so what we thought with this particular project would be very interesting was to create a common lexicon between CVE, which of course was created by MITRE many, many years ago, and attack so that organizations could better think about cyber defensive operational from both a threat and a risk perspective. I see. So just going off of that a little bit, can you tell, can you expand a little on the industry challenges that um, CVE to attack mappings addresses? Yeah. So I think, you know, it, it's a, again, it's a complex thing to unpack. And I think that's par probably part of the challenge some organizations have had in leveraging this particular project. But I think later we'll show you um, a way we came up with in order to do that. But but what you have is you have uh, organizations out there that have bone management programs uh, that are executing those. They've been doing that for 20 years now. And so organizations have lots of assets. Some of those assets are critical. Some of those assets are not patched. They have you know various CVEs of severity, low, high stuff in the middle. And the reality is, you know, most um most organizations uh, are experiencing incredibly difficult op tempo, so it's kind of impossible to keep everything patched all the time. And so if there could be a, a linkage between um, understanding that I have assets that are critical, that are not patched, but that I have other defense in depth capabilities in the enterprise, things like firewalls and EDR and all these other great capabilities that people have deployed that might be able to interdict an adversary taking advantage of a TTP that would ultimately allow them to get to a, a, a critical asset that was not patched, well, that would be useful information. And so, you know, a big part of this project was actually going all the way back into um, the, the data standards of CVE and actually creating fields to actually, you know, do mappings to MITRE ATT&CK from a CVE perspective. And so you can imagine that, that that took a long time to change the underlying data structures of CVE to have metadata tied to MITRE attack. So you've now laid out, you know, this incredible challenge that the project represented. Um, can you go a little bit further into, you know, how does the project actually solve the problem now? Yeah, well, so the, the I think this project, the first big part of this project was, um, you know, actually changing the underlying structure of CVE to be able to, uh, you know, have metadata map back to attack in it because that's where, where it needs to be. Um, and so that's that's done, but you know, that's something that has to continue to happen because obviously and, and unfortunately more and more you know vulnerabilities are are coming up on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. So so that's a big part of this. But the second part of this is now that I have this mapping, how do I operationalize it, right? And again, largely because the tool sets are so disparate, I have this vuln management tool set over here and I've got this other you know tool set over here and they don't usually integrate all this stuff together that's posed a little bit of a challenge for organizations to capitalize on this particular project but I think what we've done is we found a very unique way to do this and I hope that you know the work that we've done to kind of extend uh, this particular project in the commercial world um, will allow organizations to get a good idea for how this, this data set can be used and leveraged to better their cyber defensive operations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how would you say that Attack IQ personally is leveraging it or even 
along those lines, what, what you would think of as almost one of the best or better ways to apply it? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, uh, I think a number of people would use the information uh, derived from the project to tickle endpoints or tickle assets to see if they're vulnerable to that CVE. And, and I think that that's a total viable kind of um, uh, approach to this. We, we did something completely different. Um, our view, and I'll, I'll do a quick demo of this, was uh, we know everything about the assets. We know everything about the vulnerability of the assets. Do we have compensating controls in the infrastructure that can interdict an adversary trying to take advantage of an unpatched system? That was what we wanted to do with this particular project. And so what I'll do very quickly is just kind of show you how that worked. And let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so this was actually a, a really simple project. So what we did is we leveraged Jupyter Notebooks, which is, uh, you know, ability to basically import data from a couple disparate sources, mash it together and get some, some outcomes. And so we took all, the, in this particular case, we took all the telemetry uh, from a customer that has Qualys and we took all the telemetry from our platform that's out there testing controls and doing various different things. I know this is a little bit of a, a busy uh, top line, so I'll just explain it very briefly. In this particular case, it's a financial sector that has some critical controls around uh, something called SWIFT, which is a payment processing system. Mm -hmm. And so they had things they want to be able to manage against, like lateral movement, application flow control, all kinds of things. And so there's a bunch of testing that's going on that's very specific to that, that kind of infrastructure for that particular application. And then there's just a bunch of other security controls throughout the bank that are being tested. And so that's what you're seeing there. And of course, there's a MITRE ATT&CK view of this heat map wise of this testing that's going on, but this is where it gets super interesting. And so you can see I have a, a asset here with an asset criticality of four. And on, for the purposes of this demonstration, uh, criticality of four, a uh, five is high and one is low. And you can see on this asset here with the CVE mapping, I've got a bunch of uh, CVE vulnerabilities on this particular uh, you know, on this particular uh, server. And you can see we're able to gather a bunch of information on that asset. But then what you can see is we basically in, uh, executed a, a MITRE attack assessment, understanding all the CVE information and how well security controls would block us trying to attack that particular asset that's vulnerable. And you can see some of the controls did really well and some of the controls didn't. And so you could drill down on the controls that didn't actually see which particular TTPs were not interdicted, meaning the adversary would be successful in ultimately going after that particular asset. And so what's nice about this is that organizations can now look at assets, they can understand the vulnerability of those assets, and now we can use that mapping to decide what to test and to actually measure the impact of security controls it, uh, interdicting against that asset. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's in fact actually a very powerful tool. Yeah, I, look, this is just the beginning. And and again, you know, it took us probably, you know, six to seven months to try to figure out how to use um, that particular project. Uh, but now, you know, I'm generally very, very excited about it. And I think other folks can take a look at those mappings and use it, uh, not by itself, but with other data uh, and, and basically do these data transforms to produce very interesting insights uh, into their environments. Absolutely. And, but you also mentioned something there I found really interesting was you sort of described, um, you know, figuring out how to use it and, you know, the goals of the project. So I was wondering if we could pivot to that a little bit and ask more about, you know, how the, uh, how you approached uh, as a partner to the center, the collaborative R&D aspect of this, and what did the collaboration look like when you were developing those goals in the project? Yeah, again, this 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 project was a little bit different than some of the others we've been on because it involved uh, going to um, a committee outside of our purview, meaning the CVE, the team, you know, the organizations that are responsible for CVE, which MITRE is part of that, but there's a lot of other people that are part of that as well. And so, it was really the first time as a as the center we had to lobby other another organization to make modifications to their infrastructure in order for us to affect um, you know this mapping exercise 
and for CVE to actually have um, uh, the ability to track metadata tied back to attack. So, so this this was a very unique project that we had to go outside the organization and collaborate uh, with with different people. I think we learned a lot from that. Uh, but I think you know as we look at where the center is going, more and more and more of that will probably uh, be to the benefit. Uh, bring integration across all these different frameworks, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, at the very least, it sounds like it was a, an, ex, uh, an educational experience. Uh, in general, do you think that your work on uh, CVE to attack mappings um, expanded on Attack IQ's goals, capabilities, expertise? Yeah, I, I would. I mean, I think um, in this particular case, we created a brand new product um, out of this research. And again, it took us some time. Uh, to do that more so than other projects. Other projects we've in, implemented, uh, integrated in, and you know, less than 60 days. Uh, this one uh, took longer, but it's a bigger problem. Um, but the foundational research of this, uh, we could not have done what we did today, creating kind of a compensating controls view of, of the enterprise uh, without this foundational research. And, and it's foundational research that, you know, of course, we all hope will go on to, you know, help pe the entire, you know, global community and important work to do in that respect. Um, you know, because one of the key aspects, of course, at the center is this approach of uh, projects, making them freely available to the world afterwards. Um, can you talk a little bit about how supporting that investment in the community and these resources, you know, has benefited uh, and is valuable to not just Attack IQ, but, you know, to the larger community? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, again, Attack IQ um, has, has been working with the center since its inception. And even before that, we had put together something called Attack, excuse me, Attack IQ Academy, you know, which is a free advanced cybersecurity academy, over 45,000 students in 190 countries. And a lot of the content from that academy is derived from all these projects that we sponsor and work on with uh, amazing corporations out there. And so it, part of our corporate ethos is just giving back to the community and whether it's Academy or CTID, that's just a, a port, a, an important part of our DNA and how we identify ourselves. Well, thank you very much for that, Carl, and for your participation in the center um, and for giving us all these insights on CVE to attack mappings, uh, this incredibly in, you know, unique tool. Um, I just wanna take a moment to thank you for joining us today. Well, great. Thank you. I, uh, we're very happy to be here and thank you for everything you guys do as well.